Road to Success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank. You are listening, caring partner. A wise king called Solomon once said that as a man thinketh, so he is. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Don't go away. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. My guest today is Anne Guinya. She is the director of Badili Center. Welcome to the show, Anne. Thank you. It's so nice to have you here. Tell me about Badili Center. Badili is a Swahili word for to transform. Yeah? And Badili aims at uh, transforming the lives of single mothers from impoverished backgrounds, poor backgrounds, by giving them an entrepreneurial skill. But more than that, we target on the on the whole, person as a whole. So we also cater for their spiritual needs by sharing the word of God with them. We also um, cater to change their mental attitudes because most of them come with this mentality that someone has to help me, you know, pity party and all that. But they, we uh, empower them to know that they can be agents of their own change. Mm -hmm. And also socially by giving them life skills, like how they can be, you know, better parents being a single mother. Tell me how you, I mean, where did that vision or dream for Badili come from? Actually, I was doing my internship in a Nairobi Pentecostal church. And every morning when I used to come to work, I would find a single mother with, carrying her baby at the back. And some had more than one children. And I just thought, you know, it was too much every day. And they would come for counseling, and most of them wanted just, you know, handouts. 200, 100, tomorrow they'll be there. The other day they'll come. So it, it started, you know, I started having a passion of how I could help them more. Was it the same mothers that would come to that church for help or was it different women every day? Uh, there were different women every day, some from the church, some from outside. And sometimes because of their numbers, the church wouldn't cater for all of them. So, you know, some would go sometimes without food because maybe the food bank in the church doesn't have enough food for them. So they would end up going heartbroken and maybe just after you pray for them, you feel like, I should do more, I should do more. So that's when uh, in um, March of last year, I resigned from church because I felt this is what God wanted me to do. And now I've started uh, this Badili Center. At that time, I didn't have any money to start with. <laughs> you know, people think for you to start, to help people to start an NGO, you have to have money. I didn't have any money. I just started meeting them in church every Sunday. And the church was so gracious enough, they gave me a room where I would meet them and we'd counsel them, you know, and talk about their problems. So we started from there. And I would, you know, start showing them that there's hope because as a pastor, I know that there is hope. And later on, I was able to form a board later on in the year and register the NGO at okay. the Badili Center. And from then on, we still continued meeting them in church with one more lady who is now in my board and we would train them together on different various skills, like um, making beads from bread. That has gone bad after one day. So you just make, you know, ornaments, like the ones, the earrings I'm wearing right now. Let me see, please do. <laughs> this is from bread. This is from bread? Yes, that is from bread. Wow. The normal bread, that one that has gone bad and people threw away, mm -hmm. we use it to make ornaments. So we taught them how to make also a uh, passes, basket, mm -hmm. like this one that I'm carrying right now. Wow. That one is from uh, wood beads. You're not only using conventional materials to make stuff. I mean, no. you're making beads from bread. Yes. You're making bags from wood beads. Yes, yes. What is yes. this material here? Uh, that's part of the cushion that makes chairs. Material that remains maybe from the tailor. We go and pick it up and use it for the bags. We wanted to use uh, um, materials that are affordable for the women to get, so they won't have to go to great lengths looking for the materials. And this is really different. Is that a purse that sort of yeah. goes with this? A purse that goes with that. Wow. Apart from that, we also have 
pencil holder. So this can be used by both men and women in the office. And then I like the patrioticness of the beadwork. Mm -hmm. So you also have a Kenya pencil holder. Mm -hmm. Now you had the center. Yes. And then you had the products. Mm -hmm. How did you begin to get the market for that? We started making posters and uh, putting them in different churches and you know other places like offices. Mm -hmm. Some friends would carry them to their offices and people would actually call and order for the bags. Now where do you find these single women? How do the women know about Badili Center? The first group, the one that I got, there was a I used to work in church, as I said earlier on, and there was a lady who was a single mother, the tea lady at that time, and she every time she would tell me about her problems, you know, sometimes her child doesn't have school uniforms and all those things and clothes. So I told her, I want you, I gave her questionnaires to look for women who are just like you, single mothers or widowed, genuine cases, and then just look for like 10 or 15 of them and so they can be able to see what I can help you do. So that's how I got my first crew. And now what we do as we are growing, we are partnering with different pastors from different uh, areas in Nairobi and also in the rural areas. They organize for us forums of women who are single mothers or widows. Then we go there as Badili and train them. And I'm looking at you and I'm thinking you're, you're still in your 20s. Mm -hmm. You know, you're young and um, really inspiring to see that you're not only um, able to launch into the unknown, mm -hmm where you're quitting full-time jobs, but starting a business, an entrepreneurship, an NGO that is helping very many women. Tell me what people thought, you know, mm -hmm. when you decided I'm quitting and this is what I want to do. The ones who were really surprised were the fel my fellow pastors who I used to work with because they thought, you know, you're leaving church, where else are you going, you know? But for me, I felt this passion and this drive I was in my heart because after counseling those women, sometimes I'd go at home. My family supported me because I, they knew I was going to help people and I'd explain to them. But I just, you know, started and this is how far God has brought me. And even the women that, you know, come and find, you know, your part of the team that's training them and, you know, they're probably trying to imagine this NGO is, mm -hmm. um, has a different face than the one that they're meeting. Mm -hmm. What is the response? They come, they're like, we thought maybe she's in her 40s or 30s, but, you know, to find you. But all I can say is that, you know, it doesn't matter age or the resources you have, you can still change people's lives. All you have to do is just, you know, trust in God and use what is in your hands, actually. For us, you'll be surprised. We started with 1,200, this business. But, you know, we just encourage the ladies to work hard and to, you know, to think outside the box and not to see yourself as young, but just to see yourself as a leader that God has called you to be. We need to take a short break now. When we return, I want to hear more about Badili. Don't go away. There are easy ways to look after your money. Introducing MCASHO, the account on your phone. Open yours today at any equity bank branch or selected MPESA agents countrywide. MCASHO from MPESA and Equity Bank. Welcome back. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. My guest today is Anne Ginya. She's the director of Badili Center. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Before we went on the break, you were really sharing with us um, your amazing story. Tell me about, you know, just the entire system of Badili Center. How does it work from getting the women mm -hmm. into the center, mm -hmm. producing all these things, the training arm, and then even marketing and sharing the profits? The first thing that we deal with when the women come is we empower them to think different about themselves so that's like their mental attitudes that they can be you know they can be their own agents of change they don't have to depend on someone from outside to come and do that for them so once we are able to deal with the mental attitude then we are able to train them now on the entrepreneurial skills we're able to do a lot of counseling for these women we are also able to take them through uh, courses such as uh, financial management at their level do they pay a, a 
Do you know any money to attend this whole eight month training? They don't pay. The only time that they have to uh, contribute 200 shillings is when we need to buy maybe raw materials for them to start training on those skills. The women come in the office uh, uh, because they work on part time basis, different days. So they come in groups of five, five. We want, we like them working in groups so that it can, they can enhance unity and cohesion among the group. They work together to make ornaments and bags. And then after that, when we sell, we're able to give them commission. And we're able, the same money, we're able to buy food and things like sanitary towels, and we're able to distribute it to the women. What are some of the challenges and, and, and milestones that you have experienced? Like when I began, I told you I started with 1,200. It was challenging for me. Because I, through this organization, I've learned self-sacrifice for others and for, for the business to be able to help these women because most of them don't have even that 200 to contribute. You obviously ventured into an unknown field mm -hmm. and um, there are obviously things that you have learned along the way yes. that you can share with others. Mm -hmm. What would those be? In life, you have to learn to take risks if you want to move ahead. Because if you want to stay in the comfort zone, then that's where you'll stay and you won't grow. So for me, I took a risk. And yes, it was challenging, but I grew so much from this, you know, in, in my ideas, in every aspect of my life. You also have to be very creative, such that, you know, when you produce this product this week, next week you have to come up with, an, with a design that is different. So by the, the time people are copying your design, you have already moved on to another design. And that way you stay on top of the market. You have to be very informed about your market. So you have to research, you have to do a lot of research and, and uh, reading a lot. But you can know how the market is like, and also you can have a target group of whom you're producing the products for. What kind of advice or challenge would you give to people your age or even the youth who are also wait, you know, sitting down and waiting for this job that will um, get them out of their situation? Actually, when I look at Badili, that's where we started this organization. And the first thing we did when we meet, met with the ladies was to change their minds, you know, because the, there's a verse in the Bible that says, so a man thinketh, so is he. The way you think is how you are and how you're going to be. So you're responsible for yourself. No one else is responsible for you, not your parents. You are responsible for yourself. And you're responsible for your own change. And once you have that going, now you'll start looking into you to see what you have, the talents that you have, the skills that God has given you. And that way you'll be able to use them and go very far in life. And I love the vision for Badili. And I'm wondering, you know, when you look into the future, five years from now, 10 years from now, what do you see? I see Badili having transformed so many single mothers and widows in this nation and maybe even outside. And our product having a name in the international markets because we're already targeting on, you know, marketing our products abroad. Yeah in the US, Canada, and all these countries. And I can actually see you achieving that goal. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Welcome. Thank you for sharing your story with us. A pleasure. Great inspiration. You're watching Road to Success, the key to your next level in business. Have a great week. God bless. to success is brought to you by Equity Bank. Equity Bank, you are listening, caring partner.